everybody. We are going to talk a little bit today about um, some scientific principles and testing, things like the scientific method um, and experimentation basics. So we're going to get into some details with that today, and um, hopefully when you come back to class, you'll be prepared to rock a couple experiments and uh, maybe make a few experiments on your own, uh, keeping in mind some of the things that we will be talking about today. So I'm looking forward to giving you guys some information, and we will go from there. All right, let's take a look at our objectives for today. You should be able to understand the scientific process of experimentation and the terminology that's used in science. We're going to be looking at uh, terms you probably already know, like uh, independent variable, dependent variable, control, um, hypothesis, things like that. Um, you should be able to evaluate different types of data, both qualitative and quantitative. And then also describe a little bit of experimental bias and some conflicts. Um, as scientists, we need to do our best to prevent these conflicts from coming up in our experiments so that way we can give out accurate results that are useful to society. So those are your objectives. Let's rock and roll, folks. You've probably seen um, the scientific method before, and there's lots of different ways to describe how the scientific method works. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail with this, and um, you know, I'm not really too terribly picky on this, but... Um, there's, there's lots of ways to actually show this. So this is just a very basic format of it. You've got your, your observation and your research. You, know, you do a little bit of work to think about you know some type of natural phenomena that occurs. You want to form a hypothesis, and that's just simply an educated guess. Um, experiment, design an experiment, and then complete it. You will then analyze your data, share it with the public, and repeat if necessary. Um, over periods of time, it's important to, especially that repeat part, it's really important to repeat the experiment because the more times you repeat, the more data you get. And the more data you get, the better you can conclude the results of your experiment. So that repeat part is really important that, um, that you need to complete in a scientific experiment. So let's just go through here and talk a little bit about a hypothesis. And this is just a proposed explanation of how something functions in the world. Um, you know, this could be anything, but what's really important to understand is the second bullet point here. This has to be in a specific set of words. If is your first word, and then you describe what you're going to do. So if I drop a book in the back of the classroom, that's my experiment. I'm going to drop a book in the back of the classroom. Um, then and then what your prediction will be. So I'd say then five students will jump out of their desks. That's my prediction. Okay. What's important about this is that you need to be very specific. Be as specific as possible when you are describing your hypothesis. Additionally, there's also something that is called the null hypothesis, and this is just essentially the opposite of your hypothesis. So if you go back to the previous experiment we talked about, my null hypothesis would be if I drop a book in the back of the classroom, then five people will not jump. Okay, there would be less than five or more than five people jump. So essentially, one of two outcomes is able to happen based upon an experiment. Either our hypothesis will be proved true or our null hypothesis will be proved true. Okay, so there's really no exception there. Either the hypothesis is true or the null hypothesis is true. And we'll do some practice with um, writing out some of these hypotheses. All right. This is very important because a lot of people mess this up. And I want to make sure that you understand completely how this works. There are uh, really three variables in an experiment. The two that are the ones that are most confused are independent and dependent variable. The independent variable is what you change. That is what you are looking at in the experiment. So going back to my previous example, the independent variable is the cause. So in my previous experiment, that would be dropping the book. That is the cause of the dependent variable, which is what I'm measuring, which is the number of people that jump. Always remember, the dependent variable depends on, wink, wink, the independent variable. So you want to think about this maybe as an, even as a cause and effect relationship. The independent variable is the cause. The dependent variable is the effect. We also have something that is called a control variable. And these are things that stay the same. So your control variables are things that you control. So for example, um, where the desks are located in my classroom would be um, a controlled variable. The type of book that I use um, to scare the children. 
that um, sounds very depressed. Like I'm scaring children. Um, that it would be a control variable. Okay, you want to try to control as many variables as possible. That way, you know that what you changed is what caused the dependent variable. It's what caused the measurement. All right, so make sure you keep in mind independent, dependent, and control variable, all very, very important terms for you to understand. And again, um, in our experimental design, we possibly want to consider having two separate groups, um, a control group where no change is applied, and an experimental group where the independent variable will be applied. And the reason this happens is so that we are able to see a change uh, rather than just assume that something is going to change. We have a control group that we can compare the experimental to to see if there is any change. Uh, we've already talked quite a bit about this. I'm just going to go through it one more time. Quantitative data, that root in there, quantity, implies number. Um, so you're looking at there are five things on my desk or there are two sets of drinks. Okay, It has a number with it. Qualitative is descriptive. So things like um, colors, shapes, um, descriptive terms. So, you know, my desk is red or the cup is smooth. Those are qualitative observations and qualitative data. Some really important terminology here. We've already talked about hypothesis, but there's always been this confusion of law and theory um, and what the difference is. And I want to make sure to clear that now. Uh, a law is just simply a statement based on repeated experimental observations that describe some aspect. So a law is, a, is really just a statement. Okay, It doesn't really give any explanation as to why it happens, but we know that it does over repeated observations. So that would be something like a law. All right, A theory is something that has repeated observations, but we have a reason why. There's an explanation due to findings through the scientific method. So realistically, an, a theory provides a more grounded explanation in science than a law does, because a law just says this happens. But a theory explains why that particular thing happens. So really, you really can't get any higher than theory. Theory is higher than law, and that's a real common misunderstanding. Most people think that law is um, you know, higher in the chain than theory. But the truth is, um, being able to provide an explanation gives theory that extra advantage over the law. And lastly, we want to talk a little bit about scientific bias. Um, scientists must rid themselves of bias and report data accurately. You may have some sort of personal agenda um, while you're performing an experiment. So for example, like in the lab, you might be concerned about your grade and getting inaccurate data and how that might affect your grade. Regardless, um, you need to report your data accurately no matter what the data is because that's going to be important um, for reporting out your results and you certainly wouldn't want to lie to me or the public if you're some form of a scientist. Um, you, you shouldn't report data for personal gain. Um, you know, that's really kind of goes back to the grade thing that we talked about. I would also be wary of claims being made without data to back them up and we'll do a little bit of work with this a little bit later on um, in this unit and do some uh, do some research on some experiments um, that don't have a whole lot of data with them. So that being said, we go back. Hopefully we met our objectives for today. And um, that's going to conclude this video for now. So we look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. And we will talk to you later. See you guys.